Hi everybody, welcome to Learn to Fly Melbourne. I'm one of the instructors here and my name is Clement. Today, we're going to talk about circuits. A circuit pattern is a rectangular pattern immediately surrounding a runway. Normally, student pilots practice their circuit to practice landings. Even if an aircraft is arriving or departing from an airport, they would have to conduct at least some portion of the circuit. Therefore, knowing how to do circuit is necessary for general flight operation. After understanding the reasoning behind why we do circuits, now let's dive into some definitions regarding circuit training. The first one to talk about is rotate. It has the meaning of when an aircraft accelerates on a runway to a certain speed and then raises the nose to take off. Touch and go. It means that after the aircraft touches down on the runway, it doesn't stop, but instead applies full power and take off again, and we call this touch and go. Full stop. This is the direct opposite of touch and go. After the aircraft has landed, it decelerates, comes to a complete stop, and does not take off again. A standard circuit is in anti-clockwise direction, or left-hand turns. However, there are plenty of airports where the right-hand turn is the norm. The standard circuit altitude is 1000 feet above the ground level, and a circuit can be dissected into five different parts. It consists of the upwind, crosswind, downwind, base, and final. You may wonder how does a pilot determine which way to take off and land? The answer is the wind direction. An aircraft will always take off into wind. That is because the angle of climb will be increased, while the takeoff distance will be decreased, which increases the safety aspect of the operation. Now, let's imagine we are flying up the runway properly and ready for takeoff. To initiate a takeoff, first, apply full power by pushing the throttle all the way forward. At the same time, the engine will be producing maximum power and the propeller will be spooling up. The air in front of the propeller will be accelerated and be pushed back to create thrust. Because the propeller is rotating, the accelerated air will be rotating as well and go around the fuselage and hit the left side of the vertical stabilizer. This creates a left yawing tendency, which the aircraft will slowly yaw to the left if no correction input is applied. Therefore, some right rudder is required to allow the aircraft to maintain centerline tracking. During the takeoff roll, the speed will be increasing. At the same time, check the engine RPM is close to 2700 RPM, and the oil temperature and pressure is in a green sector. And the airspeed indicator is indicating positive and increasing airspeed. At this stage, if the engine RPM is well below 2700 RPM, or the engine oil temperature or pressure is not within the green sector, or the airspeed indicator is not indicating positive and increasing airspeed that indicate there are fault in the system and the appropriate action is to reject the takeoff. If everything goes well, we'll keep accelerating until the aircraft reaches the rotation speed, which is 59 knots for the Diamond DA40. When this speed is achieved, Gently pull back on the controls to raise the nose of the aircraft and take off from the runway. Right after takeoff, the correct climb out attitude is dashed on horizon, and the climb out speed is 70 knots. After takeoff, maintain this climb out attitude and speed until reaching 300 feet. At 300 feet, it is the time for the after takeoff checks, which includes flaps up, landing lights off, fuel pump off, and fuel pressure checked in the green. After that, keep climbing straight until reaching 400 feet, then start the lookout. If we're doing a left hand circuit, clear right, center, center, left. After ensuring there's no traffic within the vicinity, we can conduct a climbing turn on the crosswind. After turning on the crosswind, it is important to ensure the tracking on the crosswind is perpendicular to the upwind track. Because the circuit is supposed to be rectangular, all turns should be a right angle. When established on crosswind, keep climbing until reaching the circuit altitude of 1000 feet. Then start to level off and reduce power to normal cruise power setting, 22 inches of metal pressure and 2200 RPM. When the runway threshold is 45 degrees behind us, that indicates the end of crosswind and we can start to turn onto downwind. During the turn, we'll be making a radio call to the tower, letting them know what our intention is. Are we going to do a touch and go or a full stop? 
The format of a radio call is as follows. Start with the call sign, then with the location of the aircraft, finish with the intention. Our first downwind trait. Fox rock pa 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 downwind touch and go. Or fox rock pa 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 downwind full stop. Once we have established on downwind, there's a work cycle to help us fly accurately. H, H, S, S. Heading, height, speed, spacing. Heading. When flying downwind, the heading should be the exact opposite of the runway. For example, let's say we took off towards the south and we are flying downwind, we should be facing the north. Height. Maintain 1000 feet circuit height. Speed. For normal cruise power setting, speed should be around 110 to 120 knots. Spacing. It means the lateral distance with the runway. The correct spacing is roughly the silver fuel cap over the runway for left hand circuit. After completing HHSS and flying down accurately, it's time for the pre landing checks. Bum foul. Brakes off and operating. Oil temperature and pressure integrated. Undercarriage fixed. Mixture rich. Master on. Magnetos on both. Fuel selector on force tank and fuel pump on. Autopilot disconnected. Hatches, harnesses secured, landing lights on. After completing the pre-landing checks, maintain downwind tracking until the runway is 30 degrees behind our wing. At this point, start to reduce manifold pressure to 11 inches. When approaching 45 degrees to the runway, start to look out right, center, center, left. At this point, we can start our turn onto the next leg of the circuit, which is the base leg. At the same time, maintain height whilst the power is reduced. Because of that, speed is starting to decrease. When the speed is below 108 knots, extend the takeoff flaps. After the takeoff flap is lowered, we can start the descent. Maintain half sky, half ground attitude and 80 knots for approach descent. When reaching the middle of the base leg, it is also known as the mid base assessment point. At this point, the aircraft should be roughly at 800 feet. If the aircraft is above 800 feet, it means the aircraft is a little bit too high, and the corrective action should be reduce power and lower the nose. However, if the aircraft is below 800 feet, it means the aircraft is too low, and we should add power and raise the nose. If the aircraft is at about 800 feet, continue to descend normally until reaching 600 feet, then start the turn onto final. During the final turn, angle of bank cannot be more than 30 degrees. Ideally, the aircraft should line up with the runway accurately by the end of the base to final turn. After aligning the aircraft with the runway center line, it indicates the start of the last leg of the circuit, which is the final leg. This allows us to descend below 500 feet. This also means that if the aircraft is not established on final, descending below 500 feet is prohibited. When the aircraft is at early final, check the speed is below 91 knots and lower the final stage of flap, which is the landing flaps. As we are trekking along final, start to adopt a new work cycle, AAA. Aim point, aspect, airspeed. Aim point. It is a point that we aim to land if we're not flaring. This point is the second center line after the threshold. This is the point we aim to align the aircraft with the runway. However, in order to aim at the aim point properly, we have to find a crosshair on the windscreen, sort of like a gun sight to aim at a target. To find a position of the crosshair, place four fingers on top of the dashboard right in front of the body's center line. The point where the top of your four fingers and your body center line intersects is your crosshair. During the final leg, align the aim point with the crosshair by the constant fine adjustment on the control stick. And that is how to align the aircraft with the runway laterally. On the other hand, to maintain a proper vertical profile, we will look into aspect. What aspect means is the shape of the runway. By observing the shape of the runway, it can tell us whether the aircraft is too high, too low, or just right in relation to the runway itself. During the final leg, the shape of the runway should not be changing, but only enlarging in size. If the aspect is getting narrower or wider, it means the aircraft is oscillating and not descending at a consistent rate. Last but not least is the airspeed. During normal approach, the approach speed should be 70 knots. When the aircraft reaches mid-final, which is at 300 feet, it is a time to conduct a short final check, the puff check. Propeller pitch 
full fine, undercarriage fixed, fuel pump on, flaps, landing flap extended. After completing the short final checks, keep going with the aim point aspect airspeed to maintain a correct lateral and vertical profile, so as the airspeed, until the start of the runway threshold. When crossing the threshold, start to reduce engine power to the idle position. Raise your eyes from looking at the second center line to the end of the runway. Use your peripheral vision to judge how high we are above the ground. At the same time, raise the nose of the aircraft to fly shrine level to reduce the rate of descent. By controlling the rate of descent to allow the aircraft to touch down with a minimal rate of descent to achieve a smooth and safe landing. After the aircraft has touched down, do not relax just yet. Stay strong on control and use rudder for directional control to maintain centerline tracking. If we are doing a full stop landing, apply even and moderate braking on each of the brake pedals. Slow the aircraft down to normal taxi speed and follow the yellow lead line to vacate the runway. If we are doing a touch and go, firstly, stabilize the aircraft by tracking straight on the centerline. Raise the flaps to take off flaps, then apply full power when ready and anticipate the sudden left yawing moment and apply right rudder accordingly to maintain centerline tracking. Pull back on the control when the speed has reached to the rotation speed to lift off from the ground and climb out at dash on horizon at 70 knots and to start the next circuit. And that's how we fly a circuit. Circuit. Line up checks. Fuel pump on. Flaps have a takeoff. And flap is indicating flap down. Avionics at current X frequency. Max on both. Strap on when entering runway, landing lights on when clearance received. Transponder trim oil green. Hatches harnesses secured. Line up checks complete. And now we can do the radio call. Roman Tower, Juliet, Whiskey, Whiskey, ready runway 31 left for circuit. Sure, whiskey, Whiskey, hold position. Hold position, Juliet, Whiskey, Whiskey. Hold position means we have to stay at where we are because there is a traffic on final coming into land and the landing aircraft has priority over aircraft that is waiting to take off. Whiskey Whiskey, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, Juliet Whiskey Whiskey. So we'll now check for traffic on final. Strobes on, landing lights on. Line up with the runway and uh, we have been given clearance for takeoff and now we'll take off. In five seconds, apply full power. One, two, three, four, five. T's and P's in the green. RPMs with tolerance. Airspeed is alive. Use rudder to maintain center line. 59 knots. Rotate. 59 knots. Rotate. Initial climb attitude dash on horizon. Look at the end of the runway to track straight along the runway. Touch on horizon and apply enough right rudder to maintain balance. 300 feet, flaps up, fuel pump off, landing taxi lights off. And start to transit to best rate of climb. Look out, right, center, center, left. There's a helicopter on the left, so I'll extend upwind for a little bit. And I will turn on the crosswind at 700 feet. I will look out again, right, center, center, left, all clear. Climbing turn, 15 degrees, angle flank. At 1,000 feet, low to nose to maintain 1,000 feet. Power back, normal cruise, but keep turning. Now we're on crosswind. When the runway is 45 degrees behind, right, center, center, left, start to turn to the left, and um, during the turn, we can make the radio call. Juliet, with your whiskey, turning down when it pulls up. Two whiskey, whiskey. So I just told the tower that we are making a full stop landing, which means it's the last landing. When we are on downwind, do XXSS, heading, opposite heading with the runway, our runway is 31, so the heading should be 130. Account for the wind drift from the left hand side. Our current heading would be about the right heading. Height 1000 feet, circuit height. I climb a little bit, so I'll reduce power to get back down. Speed about 110 120. Spacing, it's the fuel cap spacing. 
the silver field cap should be on top of the runway. And reset power to 22 inches of manifold pressure, 2200 RPM, and started to do pre landing checks. Brakes off and fuels off, oil TCMPs, undercarriage, mixture, master, max, fuel pump on, fuel pump, fuel selector on the fullest tank, autopilot disconnect, hatches, harnesses, lights on. Pre landing checks complete, keep going with the extra chassis. Now wait until the runway is 30 degrees behind the wing, which is about now. Start to reduce the power to 11 inches. At the same time, maintain altitude by raising the nose and look out right, center, center, left, and then start turning. At the same time, speed check flaps down. Anticipate the balloon from the flaps and push the stick forward to avoid climbing. On base, 80 knots, half sky, half ground attitude, 11 inches metal pressure. And on base, the tracking should be perpendicular to final. And we're too high, reduce power, lower the nose. And if we're too low, increase power, raise the nose. We're now in base, 800 feet, which is about right. Right, center, center, left. Juliet Whiskey, whiskey could land. Clear to land, Juliet Whiskey, whiskey. Turning on to final. Not more than 30 degrees angle of bank. On final, started to do aim point aspect airspeed. At the same time, do the puff check, final check. Pitch, undercarriage, fuel pump, speed check, full flap down. Aim point aspect airspeed, four fingers on top of the second center line. Aspect is the shape of the runway, and airspeed is about 70 knots. Keep maintaining aim point on second center line. And you can see the nose is pointed slightly to the left because of the left crosswind. So we need to apply right rudder to straighten up. When the plane's about to cross the threshold, start to reduce power to idle. At the same time, rest your eyes at the end of the runway and raise the nose of the aircraft to flash rain level and let the aircraft descend very slowly for safe landing. About here, power idle, right rudder, Straighten up the nose, raise the nose for strain level to slow the descent down. Slowly apply brakes to slow down. This line indicates the boundary of the runway area. We have to pass this line before we can stop. And, and we'll stop here. Brakes on and do the after landing checks. Pump off, flaps up, avionics, I care and experience. Landing lights off, strobes off, transponder, check code and standby, 3000. Trim, seven takeoff. After landing checks complete, and now we can make a radio call to ground to request taxi back to Avery. Roman ground, Juliet Whiskey Whiskey on Alpha 2, request taxi to Avery. Juliet Whiskey Whiskey, ground taxi to Avery. Taxi to Avery, Juliet Whiskey Whiskey. And that is a normal circuit. It is now time for the threat and error management. So what are some of the threats and errors that may occur, especially during circuit practice? During circuit training, flat will be used very frequently, and it has a specific limitation speed on when to operate them. For the Diamond DA40, the takeoff flap limitation speed is 108 knots, for landing flap is 91 knots. If speed was not checked prior to lowering the flaps, we may risk of overspeeding the flaps, potentially damaging the flap system or even some other components on the aircraft. A way to manage it is by saying speed check, flap down, before we even reach over for the flap lever. On the other hand, because there are a fair amount of checks to be done in one single circuit, which makes missing checklist items to be a potential threat and error. That is why we utilize acronyms to make it easier to remember checklist items during high workload situations. And that is it for today guys. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our London Fly YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.